Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, residents of the town of Sunderland. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It is, today is uh, Monday, September 26, 2016. Let's call the order at uh, 637. And our first order of business is we're going to talk to and we're going to grill the uh, USTA Western Mass representative Michael Kalindo, who is coming here to talk to us about a one-day liquor license. Michael, what can you tell us? Well, what, what would you like to know? It's, uh... Well, well <laughs> actually, um, if you want people to come. It's a private event. Oh, it's a private event? <laughs> okay, so, that, so we usually tell people they have an opportunity to uh, sell, their, uh, sell their thing. I understand. Um, so you're not going to sell it? Nope. What can you tell us about it? Well, um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization that gets most of our funds from a larger group called uh, the U USTA New England, United States Tennis Association. Mm -hmm. um, the, you, every seven years or so, the New England board has a meeting in Western Mass. This year it's in Northampton, so after the board meeting, our organization has invited their organization to come join us for some tennis and a cider tasting. Okay. And it's going to be at the uh, Maple Ridge Church? Correct. And Community Center? They've been reaching out to a lot of different people, haven't they, Michael? Yes, they have. Good job. That's a good job. Um, so it's a nonprofit. <clears throat> There's no sales. Nope. How, how come we're asking you to get a license? Because we're serving alcohols all night. Yeah. Really? Mm. Even public, if you're not sales? Public event. Well, private event. Private event. It's not open to the private public. Event. But the facility doesn't have a liquor license. I don't know whether it's... It'd be like okay. if you're having a wedding. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay. I, I, I may... Not, so there's a $100 fee. Um... Have you paid that? Uh, they have the check. Um, um, Scott, David, do you think we need to charge them? For, for a, no insurance associated with it, not serving to the public, nonprofit. Minimal cost in that respect. Yeah, motion to grant the license and waive the fee. Yeah, that's, okay. That's fine. Great. Right. Second. In fact, they told we, me they'd hold the check till after the meeting. So, okay. <laughs> I, I, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, waive the uh, hundred dollar uh, fee because it is a nonprofit and there's no cash sales. Uh, and that, private. That the gist of your yep. motion. That's exactly right. Okay. All those in favor, please please signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, Mike. No, we're gonna get that hundred dollars back to you. Thank you. Um, Anything, all right, so it's not going to be a public event. Um, Michael, I think we're all set with you. Um, David, you, we got all the signatures in there? Got it right here. You want your license? Thank you very much. All those in favor of granting the uh, one day liquor license to Michael Kalindo, who is representing the USTA, United States Tennis Association, Western Mass, uh, motion? Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You got it. No. Now no, I can tear it up. <laughs> right. Now you can threat exactly. So I don't. Yeah. I. I, I don't think uh, there's any reason for that. No okay. chat. There you go. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Good luck. Keep it in the lines. Within the lines. Within the lines. Or on the lines. Okay. Yeah. Tennis on, on, on the, the, line the on the inside. Exactly. As long as you hit a line, you're all set. Keep it on the line. It should be mostly out. It still is. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, USTA. We're done with that. All right. Next up, minutes of uh, 9, 12, 16. Uh, motion to approve the minutes here as. Okay. David? Presented. Second. 
Motion made and seconded to uh, approve the minutes as presented for September 12, 2016. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we got 3 0 on that. Next up, um, old business, Board of Selectmen updates. David? No, oh, I don't have this week. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Scotty? Uh, Mr. Chair, if we could, tonight we hope to take action um, allowing the board to um, declare 120 North Main Street uh, surplus. And that does not give a final disposition nor a path, but it takes a uh, special town meetings uh, vote from last week, allowing the board to work uh, inside of the framework of the original, original annual town meeting article and gives us a clear path toward putting the uh, development potential out for RFQ. Again, it's really important to bear in mind for people who were involved uh, at special town meeting, the vote at special town meeting for disposition was a gap-filling vote. The original vote two years ago didn't allow a mechanism for disposition of the property. This declaring surplus only allows the board that declaration. There's no steps forward being taken except for going out for design developer requests for proposals. Uh, and that's, that's, that's pretty much the extent of, this is, that was the extension of my 120 North Main meeting. Well, um, I'd like to add a little bit to the, uh, to the town meeting that was held on, on 120 North Main Street the other night. First, I'd like to uh, thank everyone that, that came to the meeting um, it it was um, an interesting meeting at, at, because uh, I thought the moderator actually did a good job about explaining the rule of seven. Um, a lot of times that that in larger town meetings that right. gets lost, yep. but but it, and sometimes we are very familiar with certain things because we've done it many times. But sometimes the the person that comes to one or two town meetings or um, they may not understand, but he explains so everybody if if he declares something a two thirds vote and someone disagrees with that there there is a, a mechanism mm -hmm. in our we we run our meetings by town meeting time to address that issue, and that's by seven members of the town meeting uh, which are registered voters in the town of Sunderland, can just say, hey, I disagree with that. And if there's seven of them, there, that they can call for a vote. So he did explain that, and, and I thought that was, and, and we, we haven't done that in a long time. I, I, was, I was glad that the moderator talked about that. Uh -huh. It's almost like one of those preambles I should decide. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. In particular, with a special, it, it can be um, focused on a particular subject. It's really, yeah. really important that the, the body at special town meeting or even at town meeting recognizes that, you know, its democracy can still be exercised. Well, it, it yeah, and, and, it, and, it, and what it's saying also is that someone, you know, the vo <laughs> a, a voice, voting by voice is very, an interesting concept. Uh -huh. We on the front of the stage, because we're facing the stage, Sometimes we hear things much differently mm. than That's the people good, in the audience. Good point. Yeah. And 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 most you you can actually see people's face. You can see their you can see people's expressions, their their mouths, and you can see people kind of how they're voting. And, and a lot of times when you vote, I it, it's historically has been done with a softer tone than nays. Um, I just thought it was interest. It was an interesting vote. That's true. Yep. And, and that's an observation. I'm not saying I. And again, I mean the moderator can make these decree, um, but he gave everybody if they had a question with it. They gave he gave people the option. He says if you really think he's if you really think he's wrong, there was an option out there that you could have, you could have challenged it. Mm. So I thought that I thought that was I thought that was good, but I, I did appreciate the fact that everyone. Um, there was a number, I mean, we had a good number of people show up at, um, and they took interest. 
and, and I take and I take by that is that it's a reaffirmation that we're we're headed in the right path, yep. and and that's kind of a good thing. You know, actually, if I could, Mr. Chair, uh, dovetailing on that, the presentation by uh, uh, Lauren Starr, who's been the chair of the 120 North Main Working Group, was uh, thorough, but not necessarily. Um, not necessarily assertive. It was a, here's what's been done, here's the history, here's what the base design is, and here are the next steps required of the town, in this, in this case here, that particular meeting, that particular body, to allow us to take this vote tonight. And again, that only allows to see if there's interested parties. And uh, I give her a lot of credit for being kind of, um, for being very, very uh, thorough without necessarily wanting to shove the project down somebody's throat. It was more of a status update in that Exactly, in that it was sense, a status update. Know, because the whole reason for the meeting was mechanical anyway, really. Correct. So. Good. It, it was good. Mm -hmm. Good turnout. Um, so I, I appreciate the town meeting. I, and again, I appreciate everyone that came out. Uh, I thought I thought that was a good meeting. The, the second thing, are, are you all set with yep. that, Scott? Yeah, thanks. And you're all set? Um, yeah. Is that we had a South County EMS meeting Thursday night. Um, I said something in the meeting that that I will repeat here, um, and and basically, as the meeting continued on for an so, extended period of time, I, I said, um, if there's anyone out outside South County EMS watching this meeting right now, they're probably laughing at us because we're we're talking about a pro program, and the three towns had EMS. Um, units. Each town had their own EMS unit, and 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 before South County EMS, there there was no guarantee that a a Sunderland or a Whiteley or a Deerfield ambulance would respond um, at all. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't unusual to find a fifteen or twenty minute call uh, response time, and sometimes. Um, it would be much longer than that. Now <laughs> we have an ambulance response of seven minutes and seven seconds, and it's been holding pretty consistent over the last three or four months. Uh, it's right around seven minutes, a little bit more than seven minutes. And we're having extensive dialogue about the housing of South County EMS within a mile each location is like within a mile or two, and, and I, maybe it's two mile. It's not a lot, but they're pretty close. Right. And and we're have and and we we don't go forward. Right. Um. And 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 we we kind of we sp we're spinning our wheels. It's very disconcerting. It's it's I, I guess it to, to some it, that that housing is 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 very 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 important. I don't. Um, the director has, the EMS director has has come out and said, you know, both locations um, have concerns. Uh -huh. uh, you can have concerns at either either location, um, and so I guess there's no, there's probably no such thing as a perfect location. I guess. No, there's no such thing as a perfect location, and it's important to bear in mind you're talking about the. The efficiency of uh, an agency that's providing service that's an improvement over what we had and we're talking about this th housing through the lens of territorialism not through <clears throat> asset allocation not through the effective news or use of resources and certainly not for the end result of the patient who may or may not be actually acted on well, and for that it's a great disservice for local politicians to wax eloquently mm -hmm. and there i was waxing just a little no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say, Scott, that you probably summed up it much better than I could because I have a much higher level of frustration because well, you're close. I, I, I have to participate right. in it, and 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 we're promised information and, and information not forthcoming, and and we, we keep going around in a circle, and and it's like <laughs> it's, it's it's like sometimes the, the longer you the longer you the longer you hold off on something. Um, the better off, so it's like a waiting game sometimes, and I, I just, for me, um, I just rather see it done. Sure, I, I can, I can discuss the semblance of 120 North Main Street. 
120 North Main Street, it's been two years since we first bought the property, but there's a constant forward movement. You know what's going to happen next. And, and, and actually, it's taken us this long. Some of it's because of the convoluted legal system that we have mm -hmm. um, that I don't know why we couldn't make things easier, but, but we don't. Um, and not necessarily us, but the guys that make the laws. It, it is a convoluted thing, but there's always, we're, we're marching towards a goal. Mm -hmm. um, and, but now, it, it seems kind of strange to me. I, I don't, I think if you talk to the average person on the thing, they, they, on the streets, they don't really so much concern where the ambulance is housed as long as it gets to them when they need it. Correct. Well, and that gets back to the key point. The focus, which he clearly is not, and I don't think I need to say where it is right now, but it's clearly not on the service. Right. And the service dictates that you can place the facility anywhere within a certain radius and still have approximately the same response time. Mm -hmm. Given an, And that's all that we should be focusing on. I mean, obviously the financials, but I mean, the bottom line is the service, the service, the service. You know what else is interesting, David? And this is what I get. I, I, for it, us, it's not it's not the same for us. I mean, the other two towns have a much different horse in the race than we do. I you mean, know, for us, we don't we don't really have a horse. We're, we're just saying, look, we 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 like the, we like the, the idea that we have a functional, a, right, a functional improved service, which was our goal in the first place. And I personally, yeah. I don't care where the facility is, as long as it works in the paradigm of what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, and. I, I kind of do. I, kinda, I find it absurd. I kind of do chuck a little bit because I think about Hadley. Hadley doesn't have an ambulance. Right. Mm. They contract their ambulance through mm. through Amherst. Mm -hmm. And and if you look at how you know, if you look at the southern border of Hadley, sure. which is the down forty seven <laughs> yeah. along the Connecticut River, right. yeah. and and we know from the boundaries of Amherst to that location. Yep. That's a lot further yep. than, and it works for them. Right. And and they're and I just talked to one of their selectmen a couple of weeks ago, and he, they're very happy with the Amherst mm -hmm. service. So, I, I I wish some I, I, at times you wish people could just like take a step back and and look at the big picture. But mm -hmm. right. so we we discussed that um, for a while. We also discussed um, the South County EMS. Put together a, um, it, it's we need to replace one of the ambulances. They have a an ambulance group, um, and they made a presentation, um, and there was um, they discussed the the equipment they're looking to get at, and more so they're starting to look at now, and the the ambulances are becoming much more concerned about the safety of the people riding in the ambulances. And, and about now, they're talking about the ambulance we're looking at now, is that the, um, the paramedic EMT um, is seated in a mm -hmm. six-point six harness. Okay. Um, and that everything he needs is within a three feet of him. Yep. So he can do so all the patient seated. care. Yep. And, and still be strapped in. In a seated position, strapped in. Okay. Um, so it was an interesting conversation. And we talked about gasoline versus diesel. Hmm. Why would you even consider gasoline? I don't know, but hmm. there was some discussion about and gasoline the, versus the, diesel. The, uh, the explosives trucks don't use gasoline for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I'm not saying ambulances are explosive, but they have a lot of stuff. Well, there's liquid oxygen in there sometimes, right? Those kinds of things, exactly. Oxygen. I, Fire I just, I in just, general. Again, I just thought it was an interesting sure. conversation. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I would just think diesels lend themselves their, ty their type of business because there's a lot of idling. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Another, another good point. You've got a lot of good torque when you're trying to get through a light and also maintenance costs. Maybe higher with diesel. Um, yeah. But I think long term, diesels. Overall, your costs will be they're, 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 They may be a little stouter and in initial. Yes, and they last longer. They the can engine. last longer. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so we discussed mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So we, we forwarded a recommendation. Um, to the to the Deerfield board, we'll see what happens with that. Um, like that's that's all I have for my updates. Um, 
So down to new business, um, Scott, do you want to continue on the 120 North Main Street? Yeah, if it could, Mr. Chair, again, this is an extension, and I, 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 I don't want to sound like the needle stuck in a groove, but if we, if we approve this motion tonight to declare that <clears throat> property surplus, it only affords the board the mechanism to post the RFPs. That's not accepting a design. There is no project. It's a matter of ex a matter of enticing the largest possible pool for what's essentially a marginal project. For when I say marginal, on the uh, economics, we're talking about less than 20 units. Mm -hmm. So um, that said, uh, no decision is being made about color, height, entry, all of this <laughs> stuff. Again, we we have we have we have a really engaged community, right. and they want to know what's happening. Well, there's not a building happening right not now. Not even there yet. Yeah. There's going to be a whole process that unfolds where we hope to get designer developers to put proposals in, including financials, who their backings are, schematic design, delineations that concur with the wetlands. There's a lot of upfront stuff. And then we review those, not unlike the RFPs that went on for oh, the Veterans Memorial or the library, or it's a very community-based process. So if we could, Mr. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that the Board of Selectmen determines uh, under Chapter 40 of Mass General Law, Section 15, that a town-owned property on 120 North Main, described in the deed recorded in Franklin County Registry of Deeds, page 176, and acquired by the Board and the town, actually, amend that motion, mm -hmm. for open space, recreation, or community housing purposes, is no longer needed for the town for all such purposes, and that the property be transferred by town meeting to the Board of Selectmen only for community housing purposes and for the purpose of conveyance. And again, that's wordy, back to the legalese we talked about, but that only we've went to town meeting for a vote to be able to convey the property. Okay. So we have a motion um, looking for conveyance of the property as... Um, a motion to basically to declare the property a surplus, uh -huh. um, and it's uh, under Master and Laws Chapter 40, Section 15A, uh, which is now town-owned property, uh -huh. and also it's in the Book of Registry and Book 6604, page 176. Do you have a second on that? Second. The motion made and seconded, and this basically allows us now to send out the RFP and see what we're going to start getting back for potential proposals. A motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Mr. David, I could record that, please. All right. Next step in that. Next up is we have APR of Hynoski property on uh, Hynoski, um Monterey Rose Limited. And this is a par parcel of land in the south part of town. David, how much do you know about that being on your former conservation person? Um, I, from what I can see, it looks like a, um, a good parcel to add. I know um, one of the things about the Conservation Commission is they've been trying to be more focused about which things to put into APR rather than just tossing everything in there, you know, so. So basically this piece of property is at the corner of Brown Crossroad and Russell. Yep. Um, and as I remember back over the years, this, this is like the one piece of property that's been out Consistently there. Consistently mm -hmm. And that they've been trying, yeah. that they've been trying to, uh, to gain, to, they've been trying to gain, we in the town and the state have been trying to gain access to. And I guess it's finally it's finally occurring, and that's. And it, from what I recall from the maps too, it's also a matter of piecing like a contiguous area together rather than just like patchwork of disconnected um, properties too. Right. So it's, and it's going to tie everything up. The mm -hmm. other good thing about it is it appears that there's enough uh, scenic byway funding. So uh, I was going to say 47 scenic byway funding uh, that that's being handled by the Franklin Council of Regional Government. Um, so it doesn't look like it's going to cost any town funds for that purchase. 
There, um, there is there is one uh, slightly delicate uh, change in this that there's a, an agency they're asking the town to actually hold the APR note. Right. In other cases, we have yep. you know Franklin Land Trust or right. Kestrel or somebody else. In this case here, they're asking the town to hold the APR. And again, that's a that's a that's a an, an agency function. That's not a town. Uh, that's right. not going to impact anybody financially. It's a matter of just us holding the note versus the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I'm looking for a motion. Uh, motion. I'll second. I have a motion made and seconded to uh, continue with the, the proceeding of the APR Hynoski Monterey Rose LL piece of property. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. 3 0 on that. Um, no executive sessions. Yay. Other important dates to remember, October 10th is Columbus Day. Uh, so the town office building, that's Monday, October 10th, Columbus Day, which is town office building, will be closed. Our next board of selectmen's meeting will be Monday, October 17th. At this time, um, the other last week we uh, we had a, um, a very, un a very, uh, um, Key member of our community passed away, uh, Albert Reuben Drake. Um, Al, um, in my opinion, s summed up what a resident of our community, I can't even think of a, the, the right word to describe what Al did. He is very involved. If, he, if you're ever putting on a function, uh, Ruben was there with uh, Dunkin' Donuts coffee and yep. donuts, and he came into town hall just to check on how the people were doing here. He's very, very familiar with, with the people here. He and Christine were uh, around town all day. Their service to our community um, goes back, I think, to their when they first moved to this community. They, they, they took interest. They had five daughters. Um, that were very involved in a lot of different things. Um, they were very involved with the fire department, um, so many other things within our community. Um, Ruben will be missed. Um, he, um, um, I, I just can't say enough about him and his family and people like Chris and Ruben make our town a better, better make, make it a, a lot better place. So at this time I'd like to um, offer a moment of silence uh, for the passing of Al in remembrance. Thank you. Um, Scott, do you have anything else to add? If I could, Mr. Chair, along the same uh, lines, you know, there are uh, many threads to the uh, composition that's the fabric of Sunderland, and some of those threads in that fabric are have a little more glimmer to them. And I would think that uh, the contribution of Drake's, uh, you know, Al's, Al's style, he had, he had oftentimes the subtlety of a punch in the mouth, but he was a good hearted person and he and his partner Christine have added to the shimmering thread to the fabric of Sunderland. I like the punch in the mouth thing. Uh, that's, you ever play pitch against him? Yeah. <laughs> that's, but that's okay. All that was in the confines of contributing with a wholehearted effort, you know, and, and, a, and, a, and a, a moral compass that simply pointed the right way. Yeah. Right. You, you know, I, I go back to we've we've had many people that to take a interest in our town and, and I guess I always say it if, if if you you just talk to your your spouse or you talk to your neighbor um, it's a pretty good chance that you're not going to get anything accomplished or anything changed um, but coming to town meeting um, Talk, talk to your local either selectman or your town administrator or your town clerk or the 
Board of Health or wherever you have an issue. Talking to those, talking to those groups is very important. Um, I think I, I'll speak for all of our elected officials. No, no one's doing these jobs to get rich. No one's, no one's doing these jobs to, to um, because they don't have anything better to do. No one's doing it because they purposely want to um, go after someone for some particular reason. And and if and for the most part, if you have a concern or have a um, problem, if you would, if you call or communicate with the the appropriate board or person, then we can solve the problem. Ruben wasn't afraid to say Good what point. he thought. Yep. Um, sometimes you may not want to hear it, um, but sometimes you go. Where'd that come from? Right. And and you say and, and he'd look at you. And say, well, what do you mean? He says, Well, that's the furthest thing. And, and and he would listen to your explanation, and and together you could come, you could reason mm -hmm. out. And I, I think that, you know, I think that was the most important thing. Is he gave you at least he gave you an opportunity. You may not you may not both walk away agreeing with one another, but at least you understand where each other is coming. Exactly. And, and I think that for a community to succeed. You do have to have that conversations. Um, if anybody's out there watching, um, I will just remind everybody that there is a, a, a presidential de debate this evening. Um, I would I would recommend that uh, if you have the opportunity um, that you watch it um, and and try to figure out who you're voting for and and what the issues are as you see them, and hopefully they'll answer our questions. I know I got a hold of it. Anyways, <laughs> anything we, else? Uh, we have a note to sign downstairs is presented by the treasurer collector. Uh, yep. Motion to uh, approve by signature. Second. All those in favor to approve by signature, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, anything else? That's the affordable housing thing. Nope. Um, sign that note. Motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Nice. 3.75. Remember that, Joe. You get a partial vote here. Please declare us out at 710.